Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm gonna get, let, let everybody get into the room. Give me just one sec. Um, just one sec, guys. I'm just setting up the uh, the chart here. All right, let me share my screen. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me get, where's my chat? Here's Gary, okay. All right, how you guys doing? Um, so I have some very, elegant solutions for everybody today after staring at these screens forever um trying to figure things out um let's just watch the opening rotation just one second just let's just see what we got going on over here um we actually have i have a potential cell in right over here in um um In S and P, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, where is this thing? Uh, I'm going to sell the S and P right now. Just one sec. Let me see if I can get this going. All right, let's sell this. Oops, I'll go trading. Okay. Oh, why is this not selling? What's going on over here? What's going on? Okay, I'm going to, oh, man. Oh, because I have to, oh, man. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. For some reason, this thing is just not selling on, on the, I didn't have the S&P set up properly. Why is this not going on? Uh, all right. I have to sell this virtually. I don't have a choice. Okay, so sold eleven. I'm looking to get nine. I'm probably going to get it right now. I don't know why. I don't know why nothing is working on my thing. Hang on, just one second. Why is none of this working? Oh, this is so annoying. Why is this screen not working? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see the screen? Okay, I'm just testing this right now. So ignore, ignore this. I don't know why it's not. Oh, it's because this thing was limit uh, properties. Uh, okay, let me try to see one more time. Okay, I'm this again. I'm just testing testing the uh, the software. So ignore this 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 trade. It's not okay. All right, good. All right, it was working. Okay, anyways, anyways, the cell was over here for two points. That was that was a, that was actually a pretty decent cell. Let's um um let me let me explain to you why I like that trade in just one second. Let's just take a look at what else is, is going on over here. Nothing on Dow and um I actually have a cell in Nasdaq here. So let's do this. Uh -huh. NAS is actually going way against me here, but let's just do this for a second. Okay. Um, so I'm short NAS here, a little bit, a little bit late off the uh, the sell signal, and it, it yeah, it could be moving up uh, up my butt. But um, again, I want to show you. I'll tell you. Oof, um, that one is really not working at all. Um, too much vol, just not working. Uh, I'll explain to you why in just one second. 
yeah, it's uh, we're going to get stuffed on this trade. So opening market rotation. So it did not. Um, I think I, I I must have gotten stuffed on this trade, right? Let me see. I'm still in it. Uh, I'm going to get stuffed. Um, Yep. Okay. We're out of that. That got stuffed. I'm just trying to um, put the proper signals on the um, on the S um, on the Nasdaq. So Nas Nas just uh, got stopped on on the signal that I had, which was a legitimate signal. But Nas just did a V shaped recovery, which completely blew us out, which is fine because um, you're going to get a few of those anyways. Uh, let me just put this on here. Just one second. I'm just going to put the uh, trend signal on here, which is the only one I really want. This was the trend signal. You see the volatility here. It was just a huge, massive spike. I just, you know, I thought I thought we would turn, but it, you know, it wouldn't. So let's um, let's watch this for just one second here. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna take this just uh, one more time off of this move. Let's see if I can get a move uh, to the downside over here. Not not a signal, but I'm just you know. Uh, Fading, fading this this V shape uh, spike, which I think is going to come in. Wow, as a short covering spike. Okay. All right, got a little bit, got some of that back on on the five. This, you know, the the, the first signal obviously uh, hurt us, but this one, uh, this one we got back, and uh, it's probably going to it's probably going to come in. This is. Opening market rotation always going to be a major pain in the ass as far as trading goes. But the shorthand, the real shorthand of why you know why I traded this, and obviously whenever you trade market opening rotation, you're always going to uh, stand in front of uh, a possible short squeeze. The shorthand of why um, um, I really like this this sequence of signals and why it's been it's actually been working really well for me um, across all the um, across all the indices is something very, very simple. I'm gonna walk you through it in just one second. Um, but let me just, uh, hang on, let me just close this other. So I don't, I don't have too many, I have too many screens open, so I'm kind of running all over the place here. Okay, um, now I'll be patient, I'll be patient. Let's let's see how this, uh, this rotation goes. So while markets are setting up on the one minute chart, I wanna show you the real sequence of, um, uh, signals that I think is is the key to like very robust durable success and it goes like this um, essentially there's basically only two um, types of signals that I want to uh, to trade and I'll you know I'll start I'll start with, uh, with them in the following manner so uh, obviously I'm trading trend in a fill, you know, in a filtered format, which is the best way that I can do. Um, um, no, Stephen, I'm, I'm not going to talk about laddering right now. Uh, I want to talk about my setup. Um, you can laddering is, uh, uh, you know, not part of, uh, um, uh, not part of uh, what I do in live trading. Okay, I'll, I'll, we can, we can, like, what we'll do is on Friday. We'll just have an open end discussion, and you know I won't do any trading, and then you know I'm happy to uh, um, to discuss stuff. But for now, I um, um, I absolutely just want to talk to you about the setup because the setup is really the single most important thing of, of how you can make money in the long term on this thing. So the sequence of signals to avoid. I mean, what's our setup is is that if we if we go out into the um, into the grand big big thing like this in a, in, a, in a pullout way. The setup works absolutely great in a continuation trend 
and absolutely horrible uh, when we get chop, right? When it gets chop, you just basically get back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, it's very, very tough to make money. And my original idea was, well, let's avoid the buy, sell, switch, the buy, sell, switch, the buy, sell, switch, which is an okay filter, but nowhere near as good a filter as the following sequence, in my opinion. And in order to do this, it's actually, I'm, I've, this is a one minute chart that I've pulled back to, to you know, to, to a big a sequence. And I want to show you exactly um, how I want to trade this. And the idea is the following. There are only two types of sequences that are very robust, where they have like a 75% chance of success. And those sequences are the following. It, and right now I'm, doing, I'm going to go to the long side that I'll show you the, the, the short side sequences. The, the sequences are the following. You, um, we, the sequences is buy, sell, buy. So a long signal followed by a short signal far, followed by a sell signal. So if you're in a situation where you, you're over here and you look back and you see that the sequence is buy, sell, buy, you definitely want to get long, okay? That is a transitional signal to change of trend to the upside. So buy, sell, buy. Everybody sees that as a, um, um, as a, as a quality long signal, right? Okay. Um, and conversely, conversely, if I'm, changing, if I'm changing trend back to the other way, the signal of sell, buy, sell, sell by sell is uh, very, very strong to the downside, right? So I, I, unless I have that sequence of sell by sell um, or uh, buy sell by, um, I am not taking any trades. So here's, a, you know, here's another good example. Um, I have a buy sell buy goes up you know, to, to the uptrend. I have a buy sell buy. When you're looking at a buy sell buy, what basically the the price action is telling you is um, you're in uptrend, there was a corrective move, and then the, the uptrend resumes. That second buy is a resumption of the uptrend. And if you only focus on that sequence of, of signals, uh, buy, sell, buy, or um, sell, buy, buy, two buys you know, in, a, in a sequence, you then have a very strong chance of success. So just you know, where I'm looking over here, you go sell, buy, buy, I'm long here. Or alternatively, let's say I come somewhere around here, and what I see is that this signal is preceded, let's say I'm right over here, it's preceded by this signal, which is a buy, buy, sell. Again, also corrective, two signals, second signal confirms trend, I'm long over here, right? So um, sort of a similar way where you're looking here is, you know, buy signal, sell, sell, corrective, Two signals to, you know, second signal confirms a downtrend. I'm short over here, right? And if that is all that I do, all that I do, I have a really strong chance of success. Now, what's happened over here, by the way, this is really interesting, is um, so we had a sequence here where we had a, if you go back here, what you see here is you have a buy, sell, sell, right? Buy, sell, sell. But unfortunately, this was our market opening rotation. So this sequence of buy, sell, sell, which would have been a good sell se uh, sequence, simply stuffed us because it's market opening rotation and we, and we ran into a V-shaped short squeeze. Ultimately, however, you can see that the, the short signal was a totally legitimate signal and it totally worked to the downside, right? Um, it's just simply, the, you know, the, the, we, we simply step in front of a train, which always happens on, on, on opening rotation, which is why I never, I never trade um, you know, opening rotation actively because it's always that danger. Uh, but, you know, it was, we, you know, we're here to have fun and, and take scalps. Um, I, I took a risk on it. Um, so regardless, the point being is that, is that as long as you follow that sequence, you are by very definition going to avoid chop because that secondary sequence, most of the time, like let's say 75% of the time, is going to establish the directionality you want. So as you stand right now, there are um, you know, two possibilities. We have a sell buy, and if we get a secondary sell, remember that's the, the sell buy sell sequence, 
effectively reestablishes a downtrend. Or potentially, if this thing called you know, reverses and we have a sell buy buy, and let's say there's a, there's a secondary buy signal somewhere down the road, that's going to very much establish a, um, an uptrend. And in the meantime, we'll be, we'll be patient and let, uh, let the price action tell us how it wants to go. But by eliminating everything else, just looking at these two signals, we do a whole bunch of very interesting things. So here's, by the way, this was a sell signal over here in the, um, um, in the Dow um, on the opening. They gave us sell by sell, perfect, you know, perfect sell signal that moved you know, to the downside. The NASDAQ squeezed us, but the Dow gave us a great um, sell signal. And by doing that, um, we avoid a whole bunch of things. First of all, we avoid the idea of chop because we have continuity. But secondly, you know how like, you know, we can keep taking trades, taking trades, taking trades, and then like the third of the fourth trade starts to, starts to falter. Well, that third of the fourth trade in trend, we avoid also because we're only interested in the beginning sequence of any um, trend. And then after that, we kind of just let it go. We don't need to worry, you know, like if, if there's, you know, five consecutive buy signals, which um, sometimes occurs, okay, that's great. We, get, we give up that rare trend runner, but um, at, the, um, uh, at the benefit of not getting clipped out on a couple of trades inside of, the, inside of that uh, move. Um, and, you know, that creates a very, very uh, a robust structure. We don't need to take every single uh, trade within trend. We just need to take the first real trade within trend to be um, as highly accurate as we need to be. So it took me a really long time and lots of different uh, uh, permutations to figure out exactly what it was that I was looking for. But once you boil it down, it's a very simple sequence that very much confirms the directionality that you're trying to go for. So um, let me see if you guys understand what I just said. Um, and now the same thing is the rule applied to the one hour. Yeah, it does. It applies across all charts. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. We're going to go to, to, to much larger charts just a minute. We'll, and we'll look at crypto because I know people want to look at crypto today. I haven't looked at that. I just want to establish it as always on the first, on the one minute charts as a, um, um, you know, um, as, as a baseline case for us. And then, you know, and then deal with everything else um, uh, later. Um, so, okay. So this is kind of interesting. So we're sort of um, trying to see if, we, you know, if NASDAQ reestablishes a, uh, a buy signal. It's early. We're probably gonna need about 10 more minutes before anything uh, begins to develop on NASDAQ. So I'm going to uh, leave it be. Um, and we would yeah, we need a uh, um, a little bit of a, we need a trend change and, and, and trend resumption to get to get a, a secondary buy signal. But um, you know, I'll let it be, uh, we'll let it play, play itself out. Let me see where, where the S and P is. So yeah, so this was this I was trying to sell this, which you can see, which was fourteen, and that was a super easy two, you know, two for four. Uh, it dropped more than two points. Uh, and again, this was a sell by sell se sequence, which was a perfect sequence, you know, to the downside, right? Um, let me see. I'm just curious. So we have. Eh, I'm gonna. I'm just just fooling around. I'm selling selling Nas. Um, although that's probably the last one I should be selling. I should be selling uh, the S and P. But I'm just fooling around right now. Yeah, the S and P looks, looks looks the one that I really wanted to sell. It's a nice big turn. Let's see if I can sell this for two points on the S and P. Again, I'm just fooling around. I don't have any really legitimate setups, but. Um, Okay, somebody got hit. Oh, so the uh, NAS got NAS got hit. I'm just trying to see if I can get two points out of the S and P, which I don't know if I can. It'll be super slow now as usual. Um, okay, so I recovered a little bit more of the NAS move. See if I can get a little bit more of the S and P. This is not. This is just me fooling around, basically trading trading the reversal trend here. Not not anything that is a setup. It's just I'm just you know putzing around scalping, but. You know, I'll take this off screen. I'll let you know if, uh, if this hits or not. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, where am I? 
You know what? I'm, I took it for one and a half. I took this for one and a half here, just to let you guys know. I took it for one and a half. Why not? You know, just a couple of scalps, just just to reestablish my rhythm. Still, no, no, no genuine signals. We don't have any legitimate signals. So this is all just me, me putzing around, scalping. Um, let's look first at FX on the one hour chart and then, you know, further on. And I think let's take a look at the euro because euro is interesting. I think euro has a trend signal on the one hour chart. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, no, it doesn't. I thought I had a trend signal on the one hour chart. I guess it doesn't. Um, but let's look, you know, at, the, at this sequence of what I was trying to tell you. So remember, we're really only interested in the trend signal essentially at the start of trade, at the start of trend, right? And again, what is the trend signal? The very definite, the point is that, let me just sort of show you. If I'm in a filtered mode, right? If I'm in a filtered mode, uh, this by the way is a good example. This is actually a, um, a failed signal. I think it's a failed signal because if I'm long here, 95 to, oh, maybe not. No, this actually worked. This actually worked. Um, remember, on a one hour chart, I want to trade with a 2040. And I'm always looking, and again, I'm, usually it's going to be around the 200 SMA that I'm going to be looking for my signal. And remember, the signal is either sell by, uh, uh, buy, sell, buy, or sell, buy, buy. So one, 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 kind of a one, two, you know, one reverse S, uh, S, B, S, or uh, B, S, B, or sell buy buy the second the second buy two consecutive buys in a row preceded by a sell before that that's the critical thing preceded by sell so that's a transition from one trend to the other trend is your signal so if i'm long over here i'm actually this gives me a signal at 94 um 15 is my target it actually just makes my target on the, on the next hourly bar and then i'm done um, and i made that trend next i am looking for some sort of a um a reversal, you know, I'm looking for a sell signal here, obviously, because now I'm underneath here. And do I have it? I have a sequence, sell, buy, sell. Yes, I do. So I'm short over here. Um, and that becomes my, my, my sell signal. Although I think actually, ironically enough, um, this sell signal probably doesn't survive the, uh, maybe it does, I'm not sure. No, I think it does. Um, this, so I'm short over here at two, 42 is my stop. Oh, no, it, it just clips me out. This is just, uh, I think it's, I'm short at two. My target is um, 82. Uh, just clips me out, unfortunately. So this is, again, good directional signal, but, but the volatility in the euro right over here just took me out because um, I would have been short to uh, 42 would have been my stop and I just got clipped out at 46 and then I, you know, it collapses um, um, on the move. So, you know, and there's nothing much you can do about that. It's just a volatility stop, um, but it, the more point is that it shows you directionally that you're absolutely right in your, you know, in your position. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how, how, you know, the point is sometimes you can do everything right and it's still not going to go your way. Um, but um, uh, you know, you and you know, maybe I'm as I'm looking at the uh, the charts here, maybe you just don't have a choice. But to, well, I think you survived this one. Yeah, this one you survived. This is a 40. I'm just thinking, you know, given the fact that you have volatility, uh, I'm setting uh, trades at 20, 40 on the hourly, I might have to just set, set them wider because because every I'm putting this, this is a legitimate signal, sell, buy, sell signal. So I'd be short over here. But the problem is FX is such a retrace um, asset. You could have literally 10, 12 hours of retracement before you eventually reestablish your trade. And this particular move here is literally just like two pips away from a stop also before it finally collapses to the downside. Um, very, very tough to, to handicap this. You just, you know, this kind of a, where you're right on, on the overall direction, but, but the stops um, are just so uh, much in danger of getting clipped. Um, it's very, you know, I, I don't have a, a, a brilliant intelligent way of, of assessing how I would do a stop at this point. But all I can tell you is that is that directionally you're absolutely going to be right. You know, you're absolutely going to be right um, as far as that goes. You know, one possibility that I fooled around with that um, that I sort of liked a lot was, um, and this is, you know, if if, if you want to trade manually, you can kind of do this. Is 
um, a great possibility, a, a great way of, of sort of avoiding the, uh, the flowback is to trade the break of the low of the sell candle. So if you want to say to yourself, okay, I got a great sell signal, but um, instead of take going market here on the sell signal, I'm actually going to wait until um, the low of this candle is broken. So this, what happens is the low of the candle is not broken until this candle. If you come in on this, on the close of this, it's just a pure straight down move over here, right? Um, it just simply, um, uh, you know, totally uh, allows you to trade. Unfortunately, if you're trading, if you're trading that momentum, you would have taken this trade and you would have gotten clipped out. So there's never a perfect solution for for the retrace mode. But you know, you could, um, um, you know, you could definitely uh, try and you know work it that way. Um, especially and this is this is the other way. Like here's a here's a sell signal. The low of this whole sequence over here, it really doesn't get broken until this candle over here. That's the big big trans you know candle here. And it you know uh, helps you get into a trade uh, with much smoother possibilities. I you know I don't I don't have a uh, a, a brilliant way of solving one for the other because you're sometimes going to get trapped on the um, on a false momentum move. Sometimes you're going to get clipped on the stop. Um, you know the most um, intelligent strategy is 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 uh, maybe just to widen the stop. But you are you know at that, that you're going to do that at the expense of the risk reward ratio. So you know it's 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 tough. Um, you know, you might want to go for, um, for, uh, 30, 60. Uh, but in this case, with, with, you know, you might want to go just with a 30, 60 with it, with a, with a move to break even at 20. And so if you do that, then this, this, you sacrifice this trade to break even, but it's better than sacrificing it to a loss, but then you're guaranteed that both of the other trades are winners. Um, you just have to look at the at how the volatility of each currency pair is. The, the more important thing is that this is the best way to set up um, uh, to set up the uh, you know the, the selling uh, structure on um, on how the uh, the trade works. So here you know here we go just sort of to show you on on cable. So here we are. We're on. Um, uh, so you know let's start over here. First one an uptrend. Then we go to the downtrend. Now remember, the beautiful thing is you do not trigger, do not trigger on the sell candle, which actually would have actually worked for you. But the but the point is, there's very often you're going to get you know a false sell breakdown on these things by using the um, my confirmation strategy. You would what would what would happen here is you have a dip into the downtrend, you have a sell signal, and then you have two buy signals. You have a sell buy buy. This particular this buy signal over here gives you a chance. You know, for for a larger, bigger trend, and because this cable, you obviously have to use. You know, really, I would use like a, um, you know, 40, 80 stop. I mean, I think the sort of the the, the give the takeaway on on all the currency positions is um, wider stop, wider targets on all this stuff. Because uh, once you move move to to the larger time frames, the kind of back and forth that you see in, on on the um, FX side uh, just does it doesn't allow you don't have enough forward motion before you get backward motion before you finally get forward motion to kind of survive all the um, um, all the zigzags uh, and and keep your eye on the true goal which is the you know the move forward I mean the thing that, that you know that's very um, deceptive is everybody thinks trend is continuous but it's not it's very very zigzaggy and you have to survive the zigzags to get to the end goal so if you were choosing sort of like a 40 80 on this one you certainly would have survived the moves I, and made it fine right um, and so then um, uh, this is where actually it gets interesting. And this is where, you know, it becomes a matter of art more than science. Um, you may look at this signal and say, oh, hey, there's a trend sell buy signal, right? Why don't I take this signal? First of all, I think there's must have been news. Oh, this is this is the Bank of England or something. So I wouldn't have taken it. This is obviously obviously clearly, you know, news. So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have taken the signal anyways. But I wouldn't have taken the signal even on a technical basis, simply because what you're looking for is you already have a positive trend uh, structure, right? And you're always looking for a change of trend structure. So the the real signal that you'd want to be looking for is actually um, buy sell sell. I mean, if you don't have that buy sell sell, um, the secondary buy signal is going to be you know, much less of a um, interesting um, idea for you because preceding all of this move, 
you already had a very, very, very strong uptrend. You're looking for actually a change of trend signal. So what you're looking, you know, um, at is the ability to, um, you know, to, 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 to do this. However, having said this though, when you have a sell buy buy, which in this case you actually do, you have a two, you know, two buy sell. You really can't ignore this. This is a pretty decent signal, and certainly, at, you know, buying the dip over here in the 68s, you know, you have a chance here to at least for 30 points if you go 60 30, uh, you know, for a nice move. But ultimately, ultimately, you know, you're looking for some kind of a um, trend transition. So if you have a sell buy sell, you have a sell signal here, which is um, which is fine. And it's good for 41.15 all the way down to um, certainly 30, 30 points uh, to the downside. And now you have sell, buy, sell again, also a good signal uh, to the downside. And the reason why you're favoring the downside at this point, first of all, in order to have a, an upside, you need to have two consecutive buy signals. And you see you're not getting those. You're just not getting those two consecutive buy signals. But secondly, because you're really anchoring off of this prior historical move, and so far, the, you know, the highs haven't really been taken out. It's clearly making lower lows. And the interpretive idea, the interpretive sequence should be more to the downside. This is not something that you could really program. This is something that really requires much more of an art than a science. But then once you're here, then you're good. And then you just ignore all of this stuff. You don't, you know, yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful trend, but you don't get it. You know, we don't, we don't get to participate because very often you're going to get this and then you're going to get a move back up, you, you know, by chasing trend continuously, instead of just isolating perfect trend turns, you are um, assuming unnecessary risk. Um, you know, here's another you know good example. So we are, so here we are. This is trend sell. Where are we? We get a sell buy sell buy. Now this is clearly not a buy signal because because the, the trend before was a prior buy buy trend. It's starting to get tired. You don't want to be taking the long signal unless you had two consecutive buys. Then yes, you'd want to take a long signal. So what you're doing is you're just waiting for the for the, you know for the for the sell structure to happen. So if you get a sell structure, then you get then you then what you get is a buy sell sell. So you short over here, great signal all the way to the downside. You make you certainly make 30, 40 points, right? Now you have um, sell buy sell again and again. The dominant structure is now to the sell side. You don't have, you know, the buy is just not, not, not happening. So you can take this signal to the downside and it works perfectly for you. Um, you see how uh, putting yourself into this proper context, you're then able to, um, to really create much more intelligent, much higher uh, probability trades than just simply, you know, following every single signal blindly. It's putting that signal within the greater context that gives you the chance for success. And what I'm watching for right now, speaking of chance for success, is um, the possibility for a trend buy, because now we have a sell buy buy possible development here. And if that happens, um, then I am, uh, I'm in trade. So NAS, s and and none of these guys have anything. It's the only one, the only one that's turning is NAS. And I'm looking for a, um, for a trend buy signal here. Um, I wonder why I'm not getting a, a buy signal here. What's going on over here? Oh, is it because it's dipping back and forth? I think because this was so tight, this should have been this should have been a trend buy signal because but this thing just dipped below the SMA, so it did not offer us a filter. Let me just see. I'm just curious if I'm correct. This is a very very um, let me see if I can do long only if that if I'm correct. No, I don't have. So there's no there's no signal here whatsoever. Okay, fine. We'll do filtered. For some reason, this is. I I, I thought there'd be a signal here, but I guess there's no. Um, so we'll have to wait. We'll see if if the trend buy signal develops. Um, I thought this would have been. I guess maybe this wasn't trend. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. Allergies. Um, just trying to see if I can, what I got over here as a. Uh,
I just went long NAS just, just, you know, for shits and giggles, not that it's again, it's a signal, but I'm kind of just, you know, trading off the idea that yes, this should be a second trend buy. Let's see if I can get a, just a quick scalp here, but again, not, not a true signal for me, but kind of within the structure of where I want to be. Let's see if I can get this and I got done. Okay. So I was, I was right in my analysis. So, I mean, um, this framework really, really helps you most of the time to be on the right side of the price action. Because even if I didn't have a trend buy signal, you can clearly see that the buying side, the buying side is the favorable side. And if I could buy the dip within the trend, which is what I did, I you know, kind of dipped out and I said, okay, maybe it's a decent, decent enough risk. Um, I, you know, I had a chance to scalp this out properly, right? Just like if you're looking over here, I would never, never consider buying um, in any of this particular structure because first of all, we're so deep, deep, deep in the sell zone, right? And in fact, as a matter of fact, you know, we have a sell by sell, so it's you know, sell signal. But if we get a second sell signal, like it would be buy, sell, sell. You know, if you, if you, if you just ignore this sequence, you just kind of truncate to this sequence, you could um, press a sell because it, it wouldn't be a horrendous sell. It would be a low, uh, it would be a late sell, but it wouldn't be um, um, you know, a horrible sell because the, it would confirm again the, um, the probability of the downside as you're trading this, right? So, um, you know, you, you, you see how uh, interestingly and how much more accurate this kind of a sequence of, uh, of structures goes, um, you know, on the, um, on the trade. Let's take a look at, while everything is kind of consolidating, let's take a look at, um, uh, I'm just looking at Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is very deep into the sell mode. So there's literally, I mean, um, the Bitcoin is basically sort of confirming my whole sell sequence. You know, you have a deep, deep sell, you have a sell by sell, which again, reestablishes the sell mode. You know, it takes me all the way down, but not a, um, um, I'm just looking to see if I, if I could find, um, Okay, so um, I mean, here's a good example. This is this is from yesterday, I think, and this is a five minute chart. So I'm just you know I'm I'm just kind of showing you, uh, you know, how I would interpret all of this. So we have a we have a deep 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 sell off, right? We have a deep sell off, and then we have a uh, sell by sell. So it's really sort of pointing back down towards uh, you know towards a uh, a sell direction in in bitcoin um which you know which you could take i you would the bitcoin you obviously need a lot of uh, like uh 800 i think we trade that with about 800 to 400 so you certainly would have survived that to the downside but um in this particular sequence you really don't have um uh, a decent signal but even if you you know even if you took the non-decent signal just a good example of how this really works well you have a buy sell buy now, this is not a great buy signal, but you've had a big, big sell-off. So it's a low, low risk volatility trade to say, okay, you know what? We've had a big sell-off. I have a buy, sell, buy sequence. I'm willing to take this trade. And it's not bad. You know, you're coming in at 800 and it's good. You know, it's good for 400, which is what you want. So you made, you know, 400 points to the upside, right? Then you get, this is, this is where it gets really interesting. Then you get a true sell signal because if you look over here, you have a buy, sell, sell. That's a true sell signal. It means the sell, when you get two consecutive sell signals preceded by a buy, it's a truly confirmed sell signal, right? Now, yes, you, the, the thing is you're gonna get retraces and this is, where, this is where the stops really are necessary. So you have a 800 stop, I think, although no, not even, even here is 35.5 and it goes to 36. Oh no, no, you survive it, sorry, sorry. I thought it was 36. At an 800 stop, you certainly survive the stop and you get the move all the way, you know, all the way to the downside, and that's it. And then you stop, and you don't have any um, uh, any more, you know, price action. Now you get over here, and you get this buy signal. This buy signal is very, very bizarre. You've had like, you know, huge amount of movement. I mean, look at Bitcoin; it's just sort of a very, very wide ranging move. But nevertheless, when you're looking yourself at the context, you're saying, look, there's been a big, big sell off, 
And when I look at this sequence, what I have is a buy, sell, buy sequence. That's a positive sequence. That's a buying sequence, right? A buy, sell, buy sequence is a buying sequence, especially after a big sell off. I'm willing to take it. And you're in, you know, and now you're not, now you're, uh, you know, you've made your trend. Now you get over here, you get over here, and, um, you know, you're saying to yourself, okay, I have a uh, buy, sell. This is not, this is, you know, it doesn't confirm my sequence here, but then I have a buy, sell, sell. And yes, this, even though it's deep in the sell up, it's a strong confirmation that there's a downtrend. I have more, you know, more money. I have like the last of my money that I can squeeze out over here before the trend kind of gets a little tired and starts to consolidate, right? And this is what makes it so cool. It's so interesting, right? Um, and then you get over here and you say, you have a sell, buy, right? Sell, buy. You don't have a buy, sell, buy. You don't have a BSB sequence. So this is not really a legitimate sequence. This is just a turn that's kind of weak. As a matter of fact, once you, you kind of look around at this, you see, oh, they made a weak turn. And actually what happened was you have a sell, buy, sell um, structure. So this is, again, becomes a sell sequence and you're just killing it with Bitcoin. Um, so by looking at the chart, looking at the uh, buy sell sequences and looking at how they structure themselves, you can effectively pick the combination that best suits the context without too, you know, really without too much interpretation. It's not like, you know, it's not like it's different every time. It's just simply within the context of the move um, and be very, very um, accurate. In your um, in your analysis, okay. I'm going to go back to futures just to see what's going on. And uh, um, oh, sorry. So I was, you know, while I was yapping, this was our trend buy. So this was remember, remember I said to you we get a second trend buy. So this this actually would have worked again. I'm you know I'm sorry I, I took my eye off the ball. I was looking to to uh, Bitcoin. So this would have worked perfectly for us on that on that you know buy uh, buy uh, sell buy buy sequence. Because remember I said to you if we get two buys in a row that becomes a um, 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 you know, a great uh, trade for um, for Nasdaq. So I don't know if you guys were watching me or you know trading this, but you know I had I had that I was a little bit earlier on this particular sequence. But uh, regardless, it just simply confirms um, you know what I'm basically showing you. So the two sequences, the 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 cleanest sequence is two of the same direction preceded preceded by one of the opposite directions. So this is it, sell and then two buys. So that second buy becomes a, you know, a, a, buy, uh, you know, a buy opportunity for you. You, you know, this, this becomes a, a buying signal for you, okay? So sell by buy is, is a clear buy. Buy, sell, sell is a clear sell, okay? Those are, those are there's no um, arguments. It doesn't matter where we are. As long as we get those in a filtered mode, that is that sequence of, of sell by buy or um, buy, sell, sell, is always a good uh, is always a good signal, okay. Um, the other sequence is when you get a you know change of movement between one or the you know between one or the other, which is where I'm, let me see I don't have one right over here. I'm looking for a change of movement here, like this, where you get a sell buy sell, where it's you know one direction, the other direction, original direction, right? One direction, the other direction, original direction. When you have that, that um, sequence needs to be placed in the greater context of where you're at. And in this particular case, the context was that, you know, that, that uh, the uptrend had finished, the downtrend was starting, and this was a good quality downtrend signal, especially since it was deeper in the thing. Okay. So uh, Rajesh, does that make sense to you? Do you, uh, um, do you see the sequences? Oh, Fumihiro got five. Good for you, man. You uh, Fumihiro got the NAS, uh, the five on the NAS. Good for you. Um, where's the uh, the S and P right now? I got nothing. Okay, yeah. So here's a sell, buy, sell. Definitely a sell sequence, right? Because after a long uptrend, we're starting a new downtrend with a sell, buy, sell. That's a that's a great you know great possibility for us um, to you know to go short, right? Because because we, we've already had like an hour of long long movement, so a reversal movement, especially with a reverse sequence, is a um, is a really good sequence for us. Okay, so very clear. Everybody uh, everybody understands that well. Okay, somebody was asking me about the four hour chart. 
Four hour chart is a great chart, absolutely wonderful chart. Let's look at, um, I don't know, let's look at pound yen four hour chart. Um, and let's, let, let's look at the, uh, I mean, it's very, you know, it, it takes a long time to get anything working on the four hour chart. Um, mm, in this case, look, wow, look at pound yen actually gives, gives me a, it gives me, it, the problem, the problem with, you know, with, with this particular, well, this is interesting. So, and this is a really, really good example of, uh, um, I'm just looking at this. So you, this is a four hour chart. It, you know, we're really going back all the way out to look at this April, right? Um, what you find here is, so you could say, okay, here's a sell by buy. Remember I said, whenever you have a um, opposite direction, two of the same direction, it's always a good signal. Yes, but you always have, it doesn't mean it's always a perfect signal. You, you, you're certainly gonna, this is a false signal. It fails because it's just, you, you buy too high. You, it's, 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 it becomes, um, it's way, way, way late in the trend move, right? It just comes in super late. You've already had a massive move. So obviously the probability of it, of it dispersing becomes much higher. When you look at this, especially when you're looking at a four hour chart, you don't have to rush any of these entries, right? You could say, okay, you know, do I really wanna take this, this huge extension move? Um, and do I believe that you know, it's going to continue? Or um, is the re was the real signal really much earlier here, which is where you had the buy, sell, buy, which is what you really, you know, this, is, this was a much higher, generally you want, I mean, I think a good rule of thumb, this is a really good rule of thumb actually, the more I think about it. The farther you away from the moving average crossover, the farther you're away from the start of the trend, right? The start of the trend before your first signal appears, the higher the probability that could be a dangerous signal. Because, because your whole idea, our whole idea is to catch the correct trend early. So buy, sell, buy catches us completely, you know, catches us early um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a beautiful formation, right? So I'm looking here, um, you know, here's a very, very, very long trend, right? Super long trend, where is this, February? And, you know, in, under our structures, we, we would give up a lot of these signals, although not all of them, not all of them. Um, so first of all, here's why this is such a great, this is such a great strategy. So here you have buy, buy, sell, right? right? So remember, we don't have a sell signal. There is no way under any circumstances that we could have a sell signal because in order to have a sell signal, we need to have a buy, sell, sell, or a sell by sell. And we don't have any of those, if we don't have any of those sequences, therefore this is not a sell and we don't lose any money. Um, especially obviously we're going four hour charts, we're gonna have large, large targets, large, you know, large stops um, because the ultimate trend is to the upside, right? However, however, what this does give us is a second bite of the apple. It gives us a second chance to the upside because this, if this is a sell that sort of fails, and it's followed by two buys. And remember, I said to you, this is a, um, a beautiful opportunity to, you know, to get long. And again, it's super close to the 200 SMA. So we're not stretched out. We don't have like, you know, five ATRs to the SMA when we're getting the signal. So this signal becomes a very, very valid signal. And it just keeps running, um, you know, straight up, uh, looking very, very strong for you. For you. Um, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of this kind of a structure. You don't get tripped. Into, um, into, you know, into false uh, trades. Um, you know, here's a, uh, in the meantime, you know, we're going back, this is all the way to, to October. Wow, you know, it's just crazy. So, um, you know, here's another good, good example. Um, we have a sell buy. Is that a buy? No, it's not a buy because we don't have, in order for us to have that, we, we need a buy, sell, buy, or a sell, buy, buy. So again, we don't get tripped into a, into a false trade. But we do have a sell by sell, and that's a pretty decent sell. That's a pretty decent sell. We can get short over here, and it, you know, and it turns out to be, I mean, a halfway decent sell, um, you know, to, to the you know to the downside. And then eventually we have a sell by buy, and now this starts, you know, this very very nice long um, uptrend process um, that we you know that, that, that we can lock it, right? Because if we're coming in over here, this is what 30, 39, 29. It extends all the way out to uh, more than 100 pips, more than 100 pips. So on a you know on a on a on a four hour chart, I think you, you especially pound yen. I don't think I don't see how you could trade anything with less than 100 pips, 200 pips stop, right? So you certainly came in 39. You have a 200 pip stop. It's it, you have only about 100 pip risk, 
and it goes 100 pips in your direction. So that's how you could trade the longer term charts um, in the same, you know, same possible manner. All right, let's go back to, the, to, to indices for our last time. Let's see what's going on over here. Um, Dow not doing anything. NAS, it's stalled over here. We really don't have, you know, we've had our, our good signal here. We really don't have any more signals here um, to the upside in NASDAQ. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a very choppy day today anyways. So it's just a kind of miracle to be able to, to survive this. Okay, so here it gets interesting. Here it gets interesting, right? So uh, this is worth a shot. I'm actually a little bit late. I should have been here at the 15s. I should have been here at the 15s. Let's give it a shot. So we, you know, we're turning back up. We have a buy, sell, buy sequence. Where's my thing? Uh, I'm not sure I, I can get this. Let me see if I can get the MN. Okay, let's see if I can get this. I'm a little bit late on this trade, but let's, you know, let's give it a shot. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the most beautiful of, of, of trades. It's clearly making a slow, slow turn back up to the upside, but it's part of our sequence. It's not bad. It's a decent, you know, it's it's a it's it's a decent structure, and oh, you know, we're gonna just just you know trade it with very minimal um, risk here of just four points. Um, I should have been honestly, I should have been where my was my entry should have been fifteen fifty, so I should really be seventeen fifty as my target. So I'm going to I'm actually going to adjust my my. Um, Okay, I just adjusted my, my take profit to 1750 just to be in sync, just to be in sync with um, with the proper structure. Let's see if I can make 1750 on here. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can move up. See if they can lift the 17s. It'd be nice if they can lift the 17s. You know, S&P is, is very slow, right? S&P is, is a very, very slow um, kind of a lagger trade. But it's just, a, you know, just yet another good example where this analysis puts you um, in the best possible trade that you can. It just, it just went to 17 which was interesting. They just, just tipped 17. So let's see if they can lift it. No, 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 I'm not, I'm only using, remember I, I left you guys yesterday saying, listen, just stay with trend. There's no reason to use all the four signals because honestly, you know, unless you're using all four in like a, like a large, large 1725, we're almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. You know, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Okay. so. Um, again, proving, you know, proving my analysis correct as the final trade of the day. Um, no, remember I left you guys yesterday saying, listen, there's no reason to fuck around with anything else. We're going to stay to trends. We're just going to stay to the trend signal because that's, um, it, because everything else, they're all derivatives of the same idea. Um, it's signals early in the direction of the move, right? What's our, what's the big goal here? The big goal is to find the early turn and trend, you know, to the upside or early turn and trend to the downside, right? So we can use any of these things. But the beauty of using trend signals is that um, by doing this, you know, intermittent counting between, between the sells and the buys, all of the chop is by its very definition is encapsulated in the signal. And when you get a sequence that basically, if you think about it, the sequence unwraps the, ch the chop, the sequence unwinds the chop because we need to be unwound in order to have a uh, continuation. Trend gets you know bunched up into like a little windy zigzaggy move. That's where we get killed. That was the, that was the solution I was really working hard on trying to repair. And honestly, I tried a million different things. You can do you know trend against reversal, reversal momentum against that. None of that, none of that works nearly as well. It's much more convoluted much more difficult to do, and none of it works nearly as well as simply doing the trend sequence movement because the trend sequences by themselves implicitly embed all of the logic that we're looking to do, which is we're looking up, they're looking to basically give us the continuation logic that we try to trade. Does that make sense, Jonathan? Um, 
Oh, how many signals per cycle? Oh, um, you, is that what you were asking me, Jonathan? Did I, did I just totally go off tangent and not answer your question? Uh, I'm always using one signal. I'm always using, here's my, here's my settings for the trend. It's uh, the counter is set at two. The max signals per cycle is once. The, the, you know, the standard fast, slow EMAs. Um, with a, uh, oh, I know what it was. I had the MACD filter. That was a good reason. That's why it wasn't, it wasn't uh, printing before. Um, and I have the MACD filter, which makes sure that, that it's, it's not kind of a false, you know, tiny little trend uh, breakout in there. All right. You got it, Jonathan? What else? What else? What, did, you want, did you want the turn signal also? We're you saying both. You're saying you want the, the turn signal sequence too? And by the way, you know, we went further than further than that. But I'm, you know, I'm just so excited because, like, honestly, guys, I literally stayed up all night long um, running the running the scenarios um, because it's just killing me on the chop. It's the only is the only problem left to resolve um, in all of these uh, sequences. So I'm really, really glad that like I got a chance to show this live to you in three or four different permutations um, to work itself out. Because the more examples I show you live. The more it's going to imprint in your mind, it's going to become a lot easier to, to quickly analyze you know, the right. Um, you're God? Yeah, you are God, my friend. <laughs> was, that, was that a Freudian slip or was that your, uh, your, your uncle, uh, you know, the psychologist slip? Um, um, Jonathan was trying to type, he's good, and he wrote, I'm God. Um, okay, so everybody clear on all of this stuff, guys? Um, do I need to re repeat anything to you guys before we go? Mel, Peter, Karen, Connie, the crew, everybody. Uh... <laughs> ah, Jonathan, you cracked me up. Uh, oh, that's actually uh, Rajesh is saying, God, this is our birthright. Uh, that's funny. Um, all right. Um, BTC and price volatility. I, I don't know what to tell you, Rajesh. It's fucking volatile. That's, that's, a, that's, the, that's the best uh, analysis I can give you. BTC is this most ridiculous. That's the, be the beauty of our strategy is that we really couldn't care less about um, long-term duration of Bitcoin, its volatility or anything else, because we, our analysis naturally, all we, all we need to do is just figure out the wide enough stops. As long as we can figure out wide enough stops, which I think is about 800 to, uh, to 400 on a, uh, on a you know, one minute to five minute basis, um, everything else fits in, fits in. We, you know, we get the direction we get right stri strictly from our, from our um, indicators. That's the beauty of, uh, of the direction, you know? Um, so that's, a, that's my brilliant analysis of Bitcoin. Um, you, can, you can throw okay boomer, boomer at me all you want. Um, I actually, but actually, I really like, really like um, ETH, um, well, ETH is really, holy cow, wow. Jesus, I haven't looked at ETH in, a, in, in, in two days. Whoa, look at this little shape. ETH is below 1800, wow, oh man. All the crypto bros are just crying like little, little girls, right? Oh my God, wow, ETH really got killed. Here's a, by the way, here's a great, great sequence of what I'm talking about. Buy, sell, sell, boom. You know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is this is a hundred point move that just beautifully, beautifully um, targeted, right? Now, what do I do? what do I give up in all of this? I give up this. I definitely give up this. I give up this endless, 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 endless selling. Yes. So the sacrifice I make is I give up endless, 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 endless selling because I'm only interested in the first juiciest slice of the trend. And that's the, you know, that's the choice you got to make. You got to say, I'm either going to go for high accuracy trades or I'm going to go for really long, high reward trades. You can't have both. So my structure goes for high accuracy trades. If you guys want to modify the, the strategy for high reward, you can, but the rules are going to have to be modified. Um, that's the caveat I leave you with because you need to understand the limitations as well as the uh, rewards of any given strategy, right? Is that clear? Is that cool? 
All right, my friends, I got to go deal with Trader Fest. As everybody knows, this is this is Trader Fest week for me, which is just insanity. Um, so I uh, got to go. We had actually, I totally recovered all my, I totally recovered that stupid first loss, which was which was a bogus loss. And uh, we was, I think we're net positive, at least five, 10 points on the move. So I'll take it. Um, everybody have a wonderful day. I know you guys banked some uh, some trades here on NAS, um, maybe some S&Ps. Um, Cheryl, this is a, you know, uh, I know you love the ES. This is a great ES trade too, with a two, four, and a one. I'm gonna, I, you know, I, I really haven't look, looked at ES in a long time, but um, I'm really gonna trade ES with this because it's a beautiful, like it's just enough of a, um, of a move to give us really good, uh, good continuation on ES, right? Yeah, Cheryl likes that. Okay, everybody have a wonderful day. Everybody have a great day in, um, uh, in camp. Um, I'll see everybody tomorrow. And we'll uh, we'll do this all over again. Everybody, take care, guys. Enjoy it.